good afternoon. The built environment and its spaces permit motion. When correctly planned, the spaces provide civil society the ability to traverse from origin to destination with relative ease. Anxiety often arises when those freedoms are denied, either through geographical, topographical, urban constraint or the reduction of visual legibility caused by urban incongruity. Population increase, identity living, inner city migration, coupled with the influence of the transport, technology and consumerism, has certainly furthered the hindrance of flow. It has forced many cities to adopt integrated circulation systems and three-dimensional dispositions of urban land use, supersurface, surface and subsurface space utilisation. In many respects, the tall building is analogous to the city as we continue to sort of build skywards into the third dimension, unless it has the prerequisite skyports and means to get people through from the city if they're not into the building, we run the risk of accessibility suffocation. We need to increase that element of pedestrian flow through the tall building. The need for improved circulatory methods to facilitate an ease of pedestrian movement, coupled with revised evacuation procedures by potentially the use of sky bridges, uh, will certainly help to start to establish uh, a more ease of movement more akin to the urban environment of grade. This is going to be particularly important if we start to consider the tall building, its various stacked land uses as a vertical extrapolation of the city. This will obviously have more complex programs and circulation systems that interlink with neighbouring buildings and their spaces. With such fluid connections, that are creating more diverse pedestrian flu in the upper realms of the tall building, should we not be considering more quantitative methods of assessing movement patterns from the skyboard on the tall building? So let's kind of first start by thinking about what the skyboard actually is. It's very much a destination space. It's a place if you want to go and have a game of tennis, if you want to go and get a wonderful view, even if you want to go and have a drink and appreciate the panoramas of the skyboard. It's not an alien notion. Nebuchadnezzar II in the 6th century BC uh, created the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, irrigated by the Euphrates River, Unité d'habitation by the Kabuzi, wonderful rooftop terrace for social community interaction for the dwarves. Village in Julian, uh, sorry, the Ville Julian by Bignon in 1550, the opportunity to marvel at the landscape. When located midpoint, it provides a useful form of amenity and convenience. Don't have to necessarily travel groundward to actually appreciate uh, the, the means of social interaction amongst uh, other sort of people within the within the building. Uh, you don't have to travel groundward to go for your grocery. Run. They can be income generating. There's an opportunity to place your rooftop bars and restaurants, which can be a source of revenue or an observation day, for example. They can also be environmentally responsive internally and externally, provide a natural light and ventilation. So, for their successful mimicry in the sky of those socio-economic and environmental benefits that one would normally associate with the ground, sky courts can act as the spatial gel in a mixed-use tool building. In many respects, it's analogous to the hotel of the 18th century in Paris. It was a space that was within the confines of private development, a semi-public space that supported the public arena that was the square, activated by retail, providing a source of social interaction. In many respects, we can see the sky court as a reinterpretation of that. It starts to establish a, st a spatial relationship with the ground that starts to vertically balance open space in the sky with the open spaces of the ground. Just as you have a particular ratio of open space for social amenity and recreation <coughs> in the ground scraping mixed use developments, is there not an opportunity to do the same in the sky? So, what about it as a transition space? Little has been done to really consider the circulatory potential uh, for the tall building and the sky court uh, as a transitional space. 
They tend to be the reserve of the super tall. Especially when lift car capacities, waiting times and floor plate efficiencies necessitate the stacking of local cores and the consequent incorporation of the sky lobbies for onward transition from one part of the building to another. If this is the case, it can be quite analogous to the arcade, a 19th century building type that creates linkage between public spaces. In the case of Galleria Vittorio Emanuele, it links Piazza Duomo with Piazza della Scala, a wonderful opportunity for the developer to have a semi-public thoroughfare that can be policed and managed and provide income and revenue. The primary square is a transitional node that links secondary boulevards and tertiary streets and passageways can be reinterpreted in the sky court as a, uh, a pseudo-urban space in the sky which links secondary escalators and lifts and tertiary stairs and ramps. Using the sky court as a transitional space that links the disparate vertical circulation methods provides not only a connectivity to the upper levels of the tower but also the potential to link with other tall buildings and certainly in light of the World Trade Center's collapse in 2001, perhaps there's an opportunity for phased evacuation of tall buildings to actually move towards a more of a simultaneous evacuation strategy. Now, we can obviously incorporate larger escape stairs at a greater frequency in order to cater for human traffic in, in a case of emergency, but that will certainly throw out the, the, the development equation. However, the incorporation of sky courts and their sky bridges that can connect with adjacent tall buildings enables simultaneous evacuation that need not compromise those net to gross efficiencies. The sky court potentially improves the integration of the tall building with the infrastructure of the compact city, placing circulation and ease of movement at the heart of the design, just as civil society believes it's its right for freedom of movement and choice on the ground should we not be considering the same in the sky the use of lifts, escalators, ramps, travelators, and auxiliary systems to try and help permit that permeability and ease of motion. So how can we actually start considering a quantitative method to help reinforce the design of sky courts that tend towards the qualitative? Creating spaces that have a sense of place is a relatively intangible concept, a qualitative approach that is subjective and reflects the experience of the individual as propagated by people like Lynch. There's nothing wrong with that, it's great, but to be able to quantify by perhaps space syntax methods and the works of Hillier, Pepinis et al. could be a way forward to actually provide functional transitional spaces as well as pleasant recreational destinations. Space syntax has proven that spatial configuration, i.e. the disposition of the buildings and the ability to create open spaces for movement, correlates powerfully with the aggregate pedestrian movement and can explain its variance in different locations, be that in urban or building spaces. It quantifies aspects of social pattern without reference to the individual's motivation or origin or land use or density, scale, height or massing. It provides a mechanism for a predictive theory of mass movement based on rational choices of the individual's spatial understanding. Pedestrian movement has simply been found to correlate with spatial integration, that the, the area's predictability, let's take the ramblers in the top left-hand corner, for example, the greater the spatial integration and its connectivity, the greater the potential for main integrating axes to be frequented by pedestrians, forward visibility being key. And in turn, the more intelligible the spaces are when they are very, very legible. Conversely, as spaces' axes become less intelligible, for example, at the bottom left-hand corner, the correlation between spatial integration and movement becomes compromised, resulting in axes potentially being sparsely frequented. Space syntax has been used uh, extensively in ground scraping areas or uh, urban environments, for example, Trafalgar Square. It has been able to diagnose poorly integrated spaces and has been applied successfully to try and improve movement and flow. Chang and Penn at the University of uh, London, the Bartlett School, have similarly undertaken these exercises in multi-layer buildings that might be more pertinent to the tall building typology. 
what they found in the two case studies here at South Bank Arts Complex and Barbican Arts Complex are as follows. The general trend is for pedestrians to choose the shortest and actually simplest routes. It seems quite obvious, but the pedestrians have a direction in mind and set their direction as soon as possible when embarking on a route. Pedestrian decision behaviour in route choice is affected by familiarity with an area. People tend to actually like following other people. Axial depth from integrating routes and major attractors and generators are heavily influential, and grade transition and vertical level surprisingly had little effect. What's key is point number four, axial depth from integrating routes. It's key because multi-layer buildings were found to be have a poor correlation between spatial integration and movement. So often the main vertical circulation was actually far removed from the main integrating axes of the boulevard or the street or the square. They often were poorly signposted, they have wayfinding problems, and this means a failure to establish orientation, not too dissimilar to uh, a tall building in many respects, that is non-contiguous vertical extrapolation. Sky courts and their tall buildings face these problems in terms of vertical access, often several steps removed from the main integrating axis. The opportunity to pause and observe and orientate can often be compromised, and there are lower levels of visual accessibility. Now, if intelligible urban spaces are those which correlate spatial configuration with movement and forward visibility, sky courts should similarly be configured to facilitate that ease of movement that one normally associates on the ground. This could be achieved by using the sky court as a conduit to vertical, horizontal, diagonal modes of circulation that integrate surrounding tall buildings with their rooftops, sky courts, and other uh, elements within the urban fabric, as well as the ground plane of the city. This is not meant to be an indictment on the sea ground building, by the way. It's meant to demonstrate the opportunities for linkage and, op and an opportunity for a better integrated solution. By placing space and its associated freedom of movement and choice at the heart of the design process, this will allow us to consider the tall building as less of an object but more of a series of elements, land uses, stacked one above the other and using the sky court as the spatial gel. It places movement at the core of the design process. The research of Chang and Penn suggests space syntax can be used as a predictive theory, mapping pedestrian behavior in a quantitative tool. Shaping the sky court's spatial configuration to optimize freedom of movement through space syntax also suggests the design process by identifying supporting spaces. It allows us to understand where we will actually be able to pause and orientate oneself to grab a drink, to actually watch a performance. But in many respects, it hasn't been used because maybe we haven't reached the point yet of St. Elia's vision of the future those multiple uh, rooftop connections or sky bridges. So it means that the current methodology is a two-dimensional plan that is almost mechanically linked. Using space syntax in the future, however, to try and quantify that pedestrian flow to improve movement, especially when we're sort of moving 80 stories and above and skywards, we'll need to start, we'll need to start considering a three-dimensional means Using space syntax will require a similar process to that undergone by Chang and Penn, disaggregating and understanding the number of people that move through the steps, the stairs, the, um, the lift shafts, the ramps. We can start to look at ramps and the successive escalators, calculated as one axis, the travelators and the stairs, and as long as there's visual connectivity. And we start to consider the Skyway and the concourse systems being very pedestrian intensive, which are currently not always assessed as part of the program. Once these mechanized means of circulation are incorporated into the model and the obstacle of floor plate separation is overcome, a rethinking of how to assess movement vertically by employing space syntax through three dimensions will be necessary, as two-dimensional axial mapping, mapping sorry, will no longer be sufficient. We should be able to start creating more holistic designs that will be better integrated with the urban fabric. With 54% of the world's 200 tallest buildings currently executed in the last decade, it might suggest some, some San Gimignano-like sense of competition amongst economies, institutions, developing countries in their quest to, you know, to overtly express their power. Yet the proliferation of tall buildings is similarly a response to inner city densification with half of the world's population now living in cities. 
land prices are set to rise and open space may become more scarce. The tall building typology will need to similarly adapt to such change in order to improve the integration into the city and will necessitate the need for sky courts as spaces of transition as well as a socially focused destination. If the city of Towers continues to extrapolate, become more dense and incorporate multi-level auxiliary transport systems, and if tall buildings reach heights necessitating sky courts that create horizontal and diagonal levels of connection, we need to be able to improve the ingress and egress through the city and the tower alike, and predict the theory, you know, apply this predictive theory to map out aggregate pedestrian movement and improve integration. It will help inform the spatial configuration of the sky court. It will also allow us to start considering its location within the building relative to the city. Morley's plan of 1748 revolutionized the way that we map cities, identifying the open spaces, outdoor rooms that provided a sense of social interaction as well as ease of movement. Such a mapping exercise can clearly demonstrate the fundamental shift in precedence of space over object in the 18th century to the object over space in the 20th century. The Sky Court therefore can provide an opportunity within the private tall building to replenish and integrate those spaces that are so critical for movement and social interaction. And if not on the ground, in the sky, just as primary voids permit movement in the city and in the past took precedence over urban infill, the Sky Court can provide an opportunity within the private tall building object to replenish those spaces that are so critical for movement and social interaction. Undertaking space syntax to facilitate the design of Sky Courts places movement and space at the core of the design process, allowing space to once again take precedence over object. The tall building therefore needs to be reconsidered as a disparate series of land use components glued together by the spatial gel that are the Sky Courts which in turn are spatially configured to optimize movement and improve intelligibility by its users. Such an approach challenges the preconception of the tall building as a standalone object designed from the outside in to the vertical city inside out. If through two-dimensional studies of the built environment, Nolly was able to identify hierarchies of open space through figure ground, and if Hillier was able to predict pedestrian movement through space syntax, it is perhaps imperative now to consider developing means, quantitative means, that explores space and movement through the tall building in the third dimension. Thank you.